Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm Gary Woods. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I'd like to ask a medical question to change the venue a bit. However, I would be a little bit remiss uh, to not take this opportunity to personally say thank you for your services on my behalf in the past, the present, and the future. Not only on my behalf, all of us here and the country. So thank you very much. American Medical Association's National House of Delegates and also serve on the Council on Science and Public Health. So with that disclaimer, um, I'd like to ask a question about one pillar of the AMA's program. That has to do with taxes uh, in the form of allowing tax credits uh, as a base for getting universal health care. All of us, insured and uninsured. Those of us who can't afford health care will still get a tax credit, but those who are at poverty or near poverty, <coughs> poverty level, wouldn't have a tax credit, but then they would get their premiums paid for. I'd like to have your thoughts about that particular element of health care reform. That particular element of it, I would, I would be totally in favor of tax credits for low-income Americans in order for to obtain health care, health insurance. Uh, on other income levels, I would be reluctant to do that right away. I would be glad to have uh, the health savings accounts and other programs even though they expanded dramatically. But I think one of the biggest problems in America today, as you well know better than I do, is low-income Americans not being able to afford health insurance. So a tax credit for low-income Americans would be one of my highest priorities. Now practice reform would be another one. Wellness and fitness reward by insurance companies would be another. Uh, allowing small businesses to join together to negotiate with health care providers is another. Uh, putting health records online, which you know better than I do, is a much more gigantic, but doable, but doable uh, uh, process. Uh, there's, you know, they, uh, when someone loses their job today, as you know, they can keep their health insurance policy, but they can't afford it. So we've got to give them a lower cost health insurance policy while they're transitioning between jobs. The reason why I mention all these other things in response to your question is, there's a siren song out there being voiced by the Democrat candidates for president of universal, single-payer, big government health care in America. And my friends, go up to Canada first and see whether that system works before you sign on to it. Okay? There's two tiers of health care in these countries that have that. One for the very rich and the rest for average citizens. And I don't think Americans would be satisfied with that level of health care. And since this is a town hall meeting, I'd like a response to that. That's the assertion. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, there's elements to our health care system which are admirable, many of which are deplorable. Uh, we're fragmented. Uh, we don't use our resources well, both from research, translational efforts, and getting it from the research bench to the bedside. Uh, many dimensions that we need to work on. Payment is an issue. It has a watershed. Namely, if, if, if we don't have a mechanism to pay for your insurance policy, you're not going to be very healthy. You're actually going to incur more health care dollars down the road. So it's a win-win situation. That has a watershed because if you have a health care problem, you need somebody to see. But if we're not able to reimburse physicians and other health care providers adequately, they're going to go into other areas. And we, we're seeing that now in terms of medical school enrollment, uh, nurse practitioner enrollment, uh, all of these areas which will help us deliver the health care. But if we don't have a reimbursement system that's even across the board, then we don't have the people to take care of it. So it, it, it's a, a very large issue, one of which is to get everybody covered. Uh, I agree. Uh, single payer is not the way to go from my personal perspective, AMA's perspective. Uh, and if we can provide a mechanism so people accept their personal responsibility, that in terms of uh, weight, smoking, the other things that we've talked about and get in the press, that's key. Uh, health savings accounts uh, are a dimension of that to sort of wake up. Uh, yeah, I do have to participate in this process. Uh, that this is not an entitlement. In other words, I don't wake up in the morning and say, yeah, okay, uh, give it to me. Uh, we have a, for every right, there's a responsibility. Uh, that's an old saw. And I think this is an element. We're working back to that. We've been in affluent society. We're not quite so there yet, we're, uh, now. Uh, and the medicine is uh, 
dramatically increasing in its complexity and the dollars we need to spend to solve these problems. So, uh, the, the only reason why I'm not doing it yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why, my the reason why, I, the reason why I mention this, and I, I don't want to hold up any of my other questions real quick, because they, this is this, one of the most important, I think, short-term domestic uh, challenges we face. And I think it's going to be the major, one of the major domestic issues in the 2008 election. Would you just repeat again what is happening about people who are willing to go through this incredibly long and arduous process to become physicians? Well, uh, what do they do? Basically, uh, four years of uh, college, four years of medical school, and then anywhere from three to maybe eight years of what's called residency, depending on what area you want to go into. But when you leave medical school, right now, the average medical student has about $150,000 debt when he walks out. And fewer people are wanting to enter the profession? That's correct. Uh, you have data on that? Yes. I'd be interested. I'd be very happy to get to the data over the last 20 years. It's, uh, it, it's not just the exact numbers uh, as well. It's how you manage that workforce. So as you drill down, if you don't have somebody at your office uh, to do your, your annual physical, you really don't have a chance to understand that you need to get to that specialist. And we're not doing a good job of making sure we have that broad-based cadre of physicians available. And people are not going into the family practice area. They want to go to the specialty for a variety of reasons. Like money. That's, that's absolutely right. If I'm walking out of medical school with $140,000 debt, um, and I'm only earning maybe $50,000 a year, uh, and I got to open a practice and pay malpractice, and I got to pay my nurse and nurse practitioner, then I'm required by Medicare to go ahead and get an electronic system to do the electronic health care. Already, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm running negative. So it makes sense. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I, thank I, you very much. I wasn't being, I didn't mean to be sarcastic. No, I, 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 you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Thank you, sir. Yes.